I was 10 years old when I asked my mom, Mom, when are you coming back? In a few years, mijo, in a few years, my son just A few years, I asked her. Yes. Your father and I, we're moving, we're going to the, to the United States. We're going to work over there so we could send some money, so we could buy a house of our own and we don't have to live on the house of your grandmother anymore. And she explained me all of this, but I didn't want her to go. So I made her promise me that she would come back in a couple of years. Yes, I promise, she said. She gave me a little hug, she tucked me in, and I fell asleep. When I woke up the next morning, I looked around the house for my parents, but they were already gone. We started a new phase of life. We started to live in the house where we were born, where we grew up, but we now became guests at our, at our grandmother's house. Because things were different. We were no longer there with our parents. We were with our family, but things became different. They became different because there were money, money problems. My parents couldn't send money as soon as they got to, that, to Chicago because they came here and they could have to find a job. It took a while for them to be able to send money and financial trouble started to happen in Guatemala because of the civil war. There was always a shortage of money, a shortage of food. In a couple of years, we no longer felt like we belong in the house. Not only because of all the trouble, but also because my sister became a victim of my own grandfather, who in the middle of the night would go to my sister's bed and fondle her while she was sleeping. I also became the victim of one of my uncles who started to physically and sexually abuse me. My sister and I, we knew that we had to get out of the house, not only because of our well-being, because we had two younger brothers and we needed to get them out of there. So in desperation, I went to a neighbor house who lived just across the street from where my grandmother's house was. This neighbor was the best friend of my mother when my mother was in Guatemala. And I begged her, please, please, let us come live with you. We cannot stay there anymore. Please let us be guests in your house. And she said, I will only let you come in if your mother approves it. So the same night, we call my mom, and I explained to her some of the problems that we were having. Let me speak to my friend, she said. I promise, I promise, I heard her friends tell my mother over the phone, I promise that I will take care of them as if they were my young kids. So the following morning, my sister, me, and my two younger brothers, we moved in with her. And at first, everything was much better. But the lady also had four kids. And the addition of me, my sister, and my siblings, and her, with her four kids, it started to cause a lot of troubles. We started to fight a lot about stupid things, toys, space. We had to share two beds, one bedroom for all eight of us. And not only that, but my sister became friends with a young lady from the neighborhood who was famous because she liked to go out party while like coming to the clubs. And my sister had an 8 p.m. curfew. But when she started being friends with this lady, she didn't care anymore. She started to sneak out, out of the house and go to the nightclubs. I stayed awake most of the nights waiting for my sister to knock on the door. And I would get up from the bed in the middle of the night and I would open the door for her. You have to stop doing this told my sister. I know, I know. It's the last time she would say. And then she would do it over a couple of days later. One day, the lady was really upset because my sister had come out without permission the night before. She had come really late at night. And it was only around 5 p.m. and she was already gone. My sister had already left the house. So the lady was telling me how it was all my fault because I kept opening the door for her. And what was I supposed to do? Let my sister sleep in the street? Right at that time, my brothers started to have an argument with her kids over some toys. And the lady got really mad. 
So I took my brothers out and I told them, come here, we're gonna go to the park. We're gonna go play at the park. So I took my brothers to the park. To this day, I can remember perfectly seeing my brothers on the swing, on the slides, running around, having a great time, and now we just watch them. I was too worried. I was playing the part of the older brother, almost at that, washing over. When I noticed that it started to get dark, I told my brother, we gotta hurry up, we gotta get back. And when we got to the house where we live, the door was already locked. They had left us in the street. What are we going to do? My eight-year-old brother asked me. We're gonna wait for our sister, I told him. But I'm sleepy, my four-year-old brother told me. So I took off my sweater, I make a little pillow, and I left the sweater on the sidewalk. Just lay here for a couple of moments so you could rest, I told my brothers. They lay down on the sidewalk, and they fell asleep. I sat there right next to them. Behind me, the house of my sister friend, the house of my mother's friend, where we were no longer allowed to be. In front of me, the house that belonged to our grandmother, where I didn't want to go in. I didn't know what to do, so I started crying. Just at the moment my sister walked by with her friend, they were on their way to the nightclub. What's going on, my sister asked when she saw me and my brothers out on the street. So I explained her everything, that they had locked us out. So my sister and her friend, they canceled the outing, and instead we went to her, to her friend's house so we could sleep there. My sister, her friend, and my two brothers slept on a little tiny twin bed. I slept on the floor. The following morning I woke up to the news that somebody was looking for us. It was our father who had come from Chicago looking for us. When we saw our father, we ran to his side and we asked him, Where's mom? Where's mom? She's not coming back, he said. And at first I was so upset because I thought that my mother had broken her promise that she was going to leave us in Guatemala. She's not coming back because I'm taking you to Chicago to be reunited with her, he said. We left the very next day, leaving everything we had known and everyone we had known behind. We came to this country looking for a promise. Give me your poor, your tired, your hard of masses yearning for freedom. We came to this country hoping that we could find our home. Thank you.